Okay, we're going to move on to 8.5. Handy enough a bit of this because you would have done this before, as in sketching functions, drawing graphs. Um, we did it a bit of it in differentiation and calculus as well. Okay, so linear functions. Um, you know, linear has an x. Again, you should know this straight line. Uh, we've done this many a time. It's fine. Quadratic functions. Again, if um, if a if the number forty x squared is positive, u shape, and it's going to have a minimum point. We discussed this when we were um, doing um, calculus. If a is negative, less than zero, n shape, and obviously it's going to have a maximum turning point. Okay, and you can take that down if you want. I'm sure most of you is, um, are aware of that already. Um, so a rough sketch of a quadratic function. We know it's going to be an n or a u shape, and we can find the turning point. We can find where it cuts the x-axis, the y-axis, and that's what we're going to do. But we can also find the turning points. Now, we can find the turning points multiple ways. We can find the turning points by using calculus, like we've done, differentiate and let it equal to zero. But here we're going to just do a bit of revision because remember we could actually find turning points. Oh, it actually says using calculus here. We can find turning points by completing the square. So um, this will be like a little reminder of completing the square. And completing the square means um, finding this form where something's a square plus something else. All right, so we'll remind ourselves of that um, when we do the two examples. So there's a few different examples. We'll go on to cubic in a second, but we'll stick with quadratic first. And we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to make a sketch of this graph, not using calculus, but finding where it cuts the axis and then find the max minimum using completing the square. Now, unless it specifically says in an, in an exam, and I haven't seen many, if, if any, where they specifically say a way to find the turning point, unless they specifically say complete the square, or they, write, they might say write it in this form, which means completing the square, and hence find. You remember when they use that in hence? But otherwise, I couldn't see them. Um, they might hence or otherwise, they might usually say, or you could use calculus then. So remember, calculus is differentiate, let equal to zero, solve for x, substitute in, Back, find your y. Completing the square, what I'm going to show you now. So it says, that's not the right one. Where is the question of this one? Oh, there we go. Okay. So, by finding where the curve crosses the x and y axis and the turning point, by completing the square, sketch this graph. f of x is minus x squared plus 4x plus 5. So, first of all, where it cuts... They do this in a different order, but where it cuts um, y-axis less x equals 0. That goes f of x or y is equal to minus 0 squared plus 4 times 0 plus 5 equals 5. So it cuts the y-axis at 0, 5. Where it cuts x-axis at y equals 0, that goes to 0 is equal to minus x squared plus 4x plus 5. We don't want to factorize when we've got a minus, so we bring everything to the other side. It becomes x squared minus 4x minus 5 equals 0. Factorize that. Sorry, I'll just scroll down a bit. x, x, 5, 1, minus 5, plus 1, x is equal to minus 1, x is equal to 2, plus 5. So it cuts the x-axis at two points, and those two points are minus 1, 0, and 5, 0. Okay, they don't really explain that well. Um, no, well, they do actually, but they do it further down. Okay, so we found the places where it cuts, but also ask for the turning points. So a sketch is not a sketch is not every point. A sketch is just find certain points and then do your general shape of the curve. Oh, by the way, what shape do we know this curve is going to be? It's going to be a n shape because it's a minus x squared. So we'll keep that in mind. All right. So completing the square. So I'm going to call f of x. I'm going to start here. f of x is minus x squared plus four x plus five. To complete the square. We want to first take out that minus. So the minus comes outside and it becomes x squared minus 4x minus 5. 
Okay, and we leave that until the end. If it was, remember, if this was a 2, we take out a 2. If it was a 4, we take out a 4, because to complete the square, we just want an x squared there. We don't want a minus x squared, we don't want a 2x squared or anything like that. Now we're going to complete the square of this bracket. So again, I'm going to leave the minus until the end. So x squared, write down the first two terms. Remember, half this number, minus 2, square it, plus 4. And then if we add on 4, we have to take away 4, and then we have our minus 5. So all we've done is added on 4 and taken away 4. So we've literally just done nothing. Okay, we've added on 4. But now, this here is now a completed square. So that is now x, and it's just half of this, minus 2 squared. And if you want to check that, x by x, x squared, x by minus 2, minus 2x, x by minus 2, minus 2x, that's minus 4x, and minus 2 by minus 2 plus 4. So that's that. And minus 4, take away minus 5, is minus 9. And the last thing we do is we multiply back in whatever number is out here. Now it just so happens to be a minus. So the minus goes with minus x minus 2 squared, and minus by minus 9 is plus 9. And now from completing the square, we can tell the turning point is this number, is the y value, and this number except change the sign is the positive. When it comes out of the bracket, change the sign. So that's the turning point. Okay, the yellow box explains that on page 254. So now if we were to sketch that, I would draw an axis. Again, you could have, you could have uh, found the turning point by differentiating that lead equal to zero, solve for x, substitute and solve for y, and you still would have got the same thing. Okay, so don't worry. Um, I can't see a situation where you're going to be made do one way or the other. Um, y. All right, so what are we looking for? Our points are, I think, 5, 0. So we'll say, we'll go up in 5s on the y-axis, 10 minus 5, just because I don't have any space, minus 10. We'll go up in... Yeah, we'll go up in 2s on the... Got a bit more space, 6. Minus 2, minus 4. Again, you can decide your own axis. As long as the gaps between these are the same and the gaps between these are the same and they go up in the same, that's fine. And then we just want to sketch our, two, our three points. So our four, our four points actually. So we know that it cuts the y-axis at 0, 5. Cuts the y-axis at 0, 5. I know, so that's 0, 5. We worked that out first. I know it cuts the x-axis at two points, minus 1, 0 here. And it cuts it at 5, 0 here. And I know the maximum is a 2, 9 is here. And again, I know that this shape, because it's a minus x squared, is going to be an n shape. So that allows me to do a nice little sketch. And it is only a sketch. But as long as you've got those points in, sorry, that should be way more of a curve there. There we go. So remember, that point was zero, it was 5, 0. That point here was minus 1, 0. And this point here was 2, 9. So you had four points to draw that. All right, so there's going to be some questions where you're going to be asked to sketch using. Now, I want you to practice your completing the square. Half this, square it, add it on, take it away. Then this, these first three terms will be a perfect square, and the perfect square they'll be is half this value. So x minus 2 squared, add these, minus 4 and minus 5 is minus 9, and multiply back in the number. If you, if you have a number, if you don't, um, if this is just an, an x squared at the start, that's fine. All right, so that's the first example. Just bear with me now. I'll do one more example. Okay, cubic function. Cubic function is something that has a cubed as its highest power of x. Okay, so x cubed, b, x squared. It doesn't have to have the squared or the x. Once it's got a cubed, it's cubic. And if the number before the x cubed, the coefficient of the x cubed, is greater than zero, it's this sort of shape. It rises up and then comes down and goes back up again. But if it's a minus number, less than zero, it starts. So you might want to take that down for cubic function because I know people are familiar with the n and the the n and the u for quadratics. But here you might be aware that if it's greater than x cubed, it's just generally going to be this shape, starting to go positive first of all. 
and then it's going to be this way if it's less than. And that's important when you're sketching to have an idea of what, what sort of shape you're going to do. Okay, so the example in the book says sketch this. Y is equal to the... Now I know this is a cube because when I multiply it out, but you might want to multiply it out. And when they do multiply that out, you could do X by X is X squared, X by 1 is plus X, and then multiply that, that bracket by that. But anyway, when they do that, they get X cubed minus X squared minus 2X. And why, why that's important, knowing that it's definitely cubic and knowing the coefficient of x cubed, or whether it's plus or minus really, is because now I know the shape of this graph is going to be that shape, as opposed to that shape. For when I sketch it, because it's it, the only point it asks is where it cuts the, the axis. Okay, so where it cuts the axis. Um, so where it cuts... Same way, where it cuts, I should have done that in black pen, where it cuts y-axis, let what equal 0, let x equal 0. So if we let x equal 0, we get y is equal to, you could have left it like this, um, 0 cubed minus 0 squared minus 2 times 0, y is 0. So it cuts the y-axis at 0, 0. So I know that's going to be one of the points where it cuts the x-axis as well. Cuts y-axis. less y equals 0. So x cubed minus x squared minus 2x equals 0. Now to solve that we'd have to factorize. However, in our question it had already been factorized for us up the top. So I'm not really concentrating on factorizing these today. We have factorized and solved um, cubic expressions before, back in fourth and fifth year. But this one's already factorized for us. So I can say x, x plus 1, x minus 2 are the factors. So it cuts the x-axis at x is equal to 0, x is equal to minus 1, and x is equal to 2. If you're not given the factors in the start of the question, which you will for most of the questions I give tonight, you'd have to factorize that. I'm going to give you one that you have to factorize and see if you can do it. But if not, don't worry, because um, we'll be doing that again tomorrow. It's, there's a bit in this, tiny bit in this, more in this section. So you know where it cuts the x-axis, you know now where it cuts the y-axis, you know generally the shape. It didn't ask for the ma maximum minimum turning points. If you wanted to find the maximum minimum turning points, differentiate, let equal to zero, find your x's, substitute back in, find your y's. But we're not, we're not asked that, we're just asked where it cuts the y-axis, but that's why knowing the shape of the graph is vitally important. So if I draw my, I'm just going to put that these are, that's zero, zero, that's uh, minus one, zero, and that's uh, two, zero. So I know my x's are gonna my x's aren't that much at all. My y's aren't this is quite a small graph. Um, there we go, I'm just gonna do my little sketch at the end. I'm just gonna So we have our x, our y. Say I'll go one, two, three, four. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. We go 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2. Let's, let's sketch those three points that we know, four points that we know. And this is where knowing the shape of the graph is vitally important. So again, I'll go use my green pen. So we know 0, 0. We know 1, 0. So minus 1, 0. We know 2, 0. And we have to think what shape. That's all we know. Because remember, 0, 0, where it's, cut the y, it's cutting the y-axis and the x-axis there. So remember, we know the shape of our graph is that. So we know it's have, going to have to start to go up and down and back up again. So something along the lines of this. Again, we don't know the maximum. They're not going to penalize it. It's only a sketch. Something like that. Okay. Um, again, pretty much all we've done there is a revision of completing the square and letting x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 um, for these two examples. All right, so take down those two examples. I'm going to give you some questions, and we'll be continuing with this chapter tomorrow for the double.